Good afternoon, everybody. Well, it's finally here. Spring has decided to grace us with its presence. And so to celebrate, my father and I have decided to spend the day working on the RVs. Uh, I'd like to apologize in advance for the shakiness of this video. My gimbal stabilizer is no longer holding a charge, so I gotta get a new battery for it. And of course, it's some kind of a weird size that I can't just go to the grocery store and get. I gotta order it. So I'm just using the selfie stick today, so apologies in advance. Anyway, we have already been doing some work prior to me starting to record just because I wanted to get some stuff done that uh, wasn't all that photogenic. And uh, the big one probably, actually, let me take you in here. Oops, sorry. <coughs> Check it out. The Queen has a new refrigerator. It's a Dometic RM2356, I believe. And it's very similar to the old one. Interior, same size. You got the fr pull down freezer here. I'm going to have to get a hinge kit to move the hinge over to this side. I want the door to open this way, uh, like the old one did. But it's a three way it's uh, AC, DC, and gas. So that's beautiful. And uh, it's all installed and it's working. I got to get a new panel here. Um, I was going to get a picture panel like I did on my dad's RV, but I've decided instead to get some kind of a ferrous metal, some kind of a sheet metal uh, insert. And then w as we travel, I'm going to pick up magnets for various places that we go and stick them to the fridge. That'll sort of, you know, a, co a collection of magnets to cover the fridge of our, to document our travels. Anyway, uh, let's see, what else did we do here? We'll go this way. Right here, I have purchased myself a new water heater. This is a nice automatic uh, Ignite water heater. It lights itself from the inside. You just flip a switch uh, so I don't have to go outside and light it manually like the old one. So I'm going to be installing this today, and this is what I'll be showing you. What I've done already also is this is my old water pump. I've replaced the new one. This one is a 2.8 gallon per minute which is a pretty standard size. The problem that I noticed was that the water, uh, excuse me, the toilet when using the water pump really didn't have enough flow to get it rinsed well enough. Um, it's not a really the great, great design. The toilet, most toilets, RV toilets swirl to create a nice rinse. Mine just sort of goes straight down. And so it needs quite a bit of water flow. So I upgraded mine to a 3.5 gallon per minute. So a, almost a full gallon more per minute. So I'm hoping that'll make a difference. But this pump still works, so I'm going to hang on to it. Uh, let's see. What else have we done? Oh, I pointed out on Facebook that since the queen got a pedicure last year, this year I'd give her um, cataract surgery. So uh, brand new headlights. So that's they're much, much cleaner than the old ones. Uh, actually, let me show you the old ones. Yeah, here are the old ones. See how nasty those are? I'll go ahead and compare them to the new ones so you can get a really good look. Yeah, look at the difference. Just awful. So, anyway, um, nice new, new headlights. Also, I did something underneath. Let me crawl under and show you that. Now, under here, I installed this baby. This is a steering stabilizer made specifically for Dodge vehicles. Dodge apparently had a problem during this era where the um, steering box right here would have play in it, and this pin pinion arm right here would actually move back and forth in the inside the, the steering box. There was nothing you could do about it. You get a brand new steering box, it would still have the play, and it caused a lot of wandering, which is something I've noticed in the, the Queen. It's sometimes hard to keep it on the road at high speeds. You gotta really focus on driving to keep it in a straight line. So I went online, searched steering stabilizers, and I found this thing. This is actually made by a guy here in Michigan. He's an independent guy, just sells these basically out of his garage, I think. 
and he makes them for Dodge pickup trucks and vans. And basically it just bolts right in. You see you bolt this bracket in to the existing mounting bolts and you take the nut off that holds this pinion arm, pitman arm on and you install this shaft that, go, that threads right on and then this bearing goes over the shaft and tightens down onto it. And what this does is it spins in, inside here as you turn the wheel, this thing spins and this bearing allows it to, to continue turning but the bracket holds it completely still. So there's no more side to side movement from this shaft here. So it actually made a huge difference in the way the queen handled. I was able to go, I only got it up to 60 because I am too far from the freeway to go all the way out there. But um, at 60 miles an hour, when I normally would have to have two hands on the wheel, all I needed was two fingers. So this is $120 or $130 online. If you have a Dodge van or a Dodge pickup truck of the late 90s, early 2000s, you're going to want to put one of these on there. So I'll put the link to that in the description. You can order one online. It's real easy to put in, um, or you can have a mechanic do it. And as you can see, my dad is having a load of fun today. What are you doing here? I am I've taking the fan out of this. This old fan made terrible noise, and I bought a very high-end fan, the kind that Gordon has in the, in the Queen. The fantastic fan. And I'm trying to replace it. But in order to do that, you have to remove all the caulk and the butyl. I gotta figure out how to get this butyl off without damaging, you see how thin the membrane is. That's the rubber roof. On the rubber roof. So you have to be very careful of this. I'm doing that and I'm gonna re-caulk the entire roof in preparation for in a couple of weeks, actually putting a new coating on this roof that'll apparently give me years of life for this roof. But there's hardly any job, I can't think of any job on an RV that's worse than trying to get rid of caulk and replace butyl and reseal it. It's yeah. the most important job. It's also the worst. Um, <laughs> RVs are evil. Never, ever get one. <laughs> yes. Okay. So basically, we got to figure out how to get this butyl off here without root, without damaging the, the rubber roof. Uh, and then we can put the new, the new fan on, utilizing the old wires from the old fan right here. Who knows what these other wires are? In fact, there's two more loose wires. Careful, that's up hot and a little short. Well, then what are these here? They go, they, they power the fan and then they go back here to the lights and such. Oh, I see. The, the, the fan is tied into the... Correct. I see. Okay. Correct. So... Well, that yes. should be loads of fun. Oh, it is. I'm, I'm just so looking forward to doing more of this. Okay. I wish I was born... I wish I was born rich instead of incredibly good looking and I could, you know, have this done. Well, that makes two of us. Okay. I guess now is the time to get started on the water heater. One other thing I wanted to show you, this is my father's spare tire that was mounted underneath. We finally got it down. Um, I hope that it's still got... Yeah, it's still got the thing. It's never been used. And we were wondering how old it was. So lay it down. Right here is a DOT number that every tire has. And it's some kind of a manufacturer's code, and you can you should be able to tell how old the tire is from the last digits on here. Now, this only has three. They, they're supposed to be four, but we believe this means second month of two thousand or of 1999, because his RV is a 99, which means this tire is the original spare tire that's been under there since this thing was new. Yes, the digits <coughs> went. This code in the year 2000 went to four digits. That is three digits, which means that is a 1999 tire. It's a 20 year old tire. And despite how it looks, I am never going to put this on my motorhome. Hell no. I'm going to take this out and I'm going to replace the tire. Definitely. A brand new tire with the paper still on it. How often does that happen? <laughs> in fact, to show you how important it is that you replace your tires regularly, as you can see the skirt on this uh, wheel well is gone because at some point the previous owner had a blowout even though the tire looked okay it was so old that it couldn't handle it and it exploded and did all this damage so it's very important to replace your tires regularly even if they still have tread on them because it's incredibly high pressure and there's a lot of stress on these tires going down the road in fact if you remember Mike from the rebuild of the top um, his brother had a 
in a trailer, <coughs> and his tire exploded, and it ripped through the bottom of the trailer. It took out the whole kitchen, and the insurance company actually totaled his trailer. Oh, yeah, yeah, from, yeah. A, from a blown tire. Yep. Yep. So they so, can do a lot of damage. It's very important to replace your tires fairly regularly. Uh, talk to the uh, people that you buy your tires from and ask them how many years a tire is okay to, to use because a lot of these vehicles, the tires age out before they wear out. Yes. So even though it still has tread, doesn't necessarily mean you should still be driving on it. It's also, it's also very important that whatever the load rating is, get one up from that. Do not use the minimum load rating. Yeah. Get a little bit better tire. <clears throat> it'll serve you so well. And as we found from last year with the Queen, don't get cheap tires either. I bought cheap tires for the Queen because I was trying to save money after replacing the engine, and I got a, a couple of thousand miles out of them before one of the t tires blew a belt down in Florida. It's not just the tires that were cheap. Thank you very much for that input. Very helpful. Very helpful as usual. Just my two cents. Yes, that's all your where worth. You got that cheap, Dean. It must be your mother. Yeah, sure. Anyway, the point that I was making is that it ended up costing me more money to, by having to buy cheap, buy more expensive tires down in Florida at the last minute. So in, invest the money, get good tires, and replace them after a few years. So, okay, that's all. That's my, my preach for the day. Let's do the water heater. So the first thing I got to do to get the water heater out is unbolt it from behind. It's very unpleasant working under here, so I won't be recording while I do it because it's just too tight to work under there and try to record at the same time. But Anyway, I just got to un unhook the, the pipes and then I got to go around to the other side and, and uh, unscrew the thing from the body and pull it out. So uh, I'll meet you around the front when I'm done back here. All right, so a water heater is fairly simple. It's just an inlet pipe, an outlet pipe, gas line, and that's pretty much it. Um, this, however, it does have the electric uh, probe that I put in there, which needs to be cleaned. Um, this slips into this plug here and uh, heats the water electrically when I have uh, 110 power. Um, so what I'm going to do, what I have to do, I have to undo all these screws around the whole perimeter, all the way around, undo this ground line, and undo the gas line, and then slowly pull the water heater out and everything needs to feed back through this hole. And uh, that's it. Once I pull everything, it should just slide right out. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, the old water heater is out. Uh, these are just some wires that are go to something else, but uh, I actually want to point out that there, you know, there have been a lot of things on this van that I have complained about as far as the design is concerned. But this is actually one of those times when I'm very happy with the way this thing is designed. As you can see, in order to install the water heater, they actually cut the floor, cut a hole in the floor, and then installed this metal pan. And this metal pan has a hole in the back, as well as just being open on the, on the front here. Boy, the colors are kind of washed out. Anyway, um, this means that if the water heater itself, the tank or the connections in the back, ever starts to leak for whatever reason, it's going to go into this pan and out. It's not going to rot the floor or do any damage whatsoever. It's actually a very good design the way they've done this. So I'm happy about that. These are the wires that were existing for the old water heater. Um, the, for the water heater that came with the van initially had the uh, self-igniting function, but it was a bad tank, so I replaced it with an even older one. So these wires can be reused for the new water heater, so it'll work just like it should. These are the electric uh, components that I talked about. There's your gas line. Now let's go around, I'll show you the water heater itself. Looks like there was some moisture under there because it's all moldy. See, this is all just paper insulation. And once it gets wet, it gets moldy. So it got wet at some point and nasty. Fortunately, the new water heater uses styrofoam, so that's a little more mold resistant. But what I gotta do is I gotta take off these valves and move them over to the new unit and then it'll be ready to slide into place. Unfortunately, the handle broke off of this valve somehow in the process of pulling it out. I don't know how that happened. Um, I can still use it though, it's still, you can still turn it. 
just a kind of annoying thing. Anyway, I will uh, do this and get back to you. Okay, the new water heater is in. It was uh, not a fun job. The thing barely fits. In fact, it doesn't quite fit as well as the old one, but I sort of had to just jam it in there. But anyway, it should work well enough. I got the electric option hooked up, and uh, now I just got to dewinterize, fill the system with water, and make sure she works. Actually, come to think of it, I shouldn't have put that in yet, because I was supposed to use that as a drain for the antifreeze. Oh well, I'll do something else. <laughs> I'll get back to you in a minute. Okay, I've got her dewinterized. Now it's just a matter of seeing if it's going to ignite. Let me just set this camera up here and go inside and hit the switch. Awesome. Okay, now all I gotta do is uh, caulk up the, the outside, and we're good to go. <laughs> awesome. Oh, one thing I did screw up, by the way, in the winterizing process, I don't think I ran any antifreeze through this thing. Um, when I opened it up, I found this was completely cracked through, clearly from freezing. And uh, I'm hearing a noise in this. When I'm running the water, there's um, w water dripping down from here. And I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah, see that noise it tells me there's a leak. It's not leaking inside. It's leaking outside, but it's still a leak, which means the pump is going to lose pressure and have to keep turning on and off. So I'm going to have to fix that slash replace this whole unit. So that's a bummer, but not a huge bummer. Could have been a lot worse. But uh, yeah, I think that's all for today. I think that's all the projects I have for the day. I'm gonna help my dad finish up his, then we're gonna clean up and call it a day. Whew. Well, this is it folks, the official start of 2019. And uh, we're getting all the work done early so that we can get, get uh, traveling and have a great year. So. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you'll watch some more. Remember, go to facebook.com slash ramblingmichigander to follow along with us on the side. And we will see you all next time. Take care.